So let me introduce now our next speaker, uh, Prem Jain, who's co-founder and CEO of Pinsando, uh, which you've been hearing about with their smart network. Uh, previously, he was at Cisco for 20 years, where he developed and honed many of uh, the key innovations in writing, switching, and SDN. Um, Prem most recently served as uh, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Cisco's INS Business Unit. He was also co-founder and uh, of several spin-ins uh, 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 into Cisco. Prior to Cisco, Prem worked at Crescendo Systems, which was acquired by, by Cisco and David Systems. Um, Prem uh, is going to talk about the value of P4 programmability at the edge, which we're starting to hear a little bit more about. And uh, Prem, take it away, please. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Larry. Uh, it's nice to be here with all of you. And I was listening to both presentations and I was thinking about is that, you know, what we have is really solves a lot of those issues which is being discussed and I'll share with you. So the thing, my talk, uh, topic of my talk is basically the value of P4 programmability at the network edge, but it can be used anywhere else. And the, uh, the use case, which is really, I think is very exciting is the capabilities of P4, which already exist and what uh, modifications are required to make sure uh, the extensions of the P4 uh, so that you can use it at the edge. And I'll talk about that and give you some examples where it is being used. So I think, as uh, Guy talked about from the Intel perspective, <clears throat> also, you know, he said, uh, you know, the intelligence is moving to the edge, I think, which is very true. Cloud brings that model to us. And uh, it's very, very exciting uh, to see simplification is being done in the network services, particularly. And if you look at it, the network core is now in the cloud vendors. If you look at the top uh, 10, it's basically simple layer, two layer, three transport and all the intelligent uh, services are really at the edge. And why they're able to do that is, uh, you know, some of them is still done on the host, some of them is done with their smart mix, some of them is done with their FPGA solutions. But the idea is really to scale out. This is a really a scale out model where it can be done on the edge. And this edge in this particular case was the host uh, where basically these services are, are being deployed. Uh, one of the advantages of doing, instead of doing into the switch, uh, doing into the, uh, you know, on the, on the edge or the server edge is uh, there's a less traffic there. Obviously, whatever the server can generate, that's the traffic which you have. And there are more resources available to do many different things for these per packet flow. And we'll talk about some of those basically. And the third is very, very important is it's very close to the application where this edge is where is this smart make is sitting and there are a lot of new possibilities for example you know you can do tcp uh, termination you can do layer four and above services you can provide storage services which is just talked about uh, you can talk about uh, layer two layer three underlay overlay networks you can do security services and you can also do the pci services which you can also provide so this is really the right uh, you know use cases for p4 why this is important is uh, basically the flexibility of programmability. As you know very well, uh, you know, there are a lot of protocols which establish protocols and there are a lot of implementation which is still evolving and uh, new features are evolving. So having the programmability and the performance of P4, which is, uh, you know, is very, very powerful because it's used as a part of the, not just packet processing, but also like we talked about message processing. Is a combination of the two really gives a very unique solution uh, and provide uh, at the edge. This is one of the things which is uh, we are delivering. Uh, if you look at it from the point of view of Pensando distributed services platform, uh, basically at the top, if you look at it, it's a centrally managed uh, you know, manager, which is, which is really driven by policy services, uh, required for that particular uh, operation. The important part here is that the, uh, the PC, PSM is totally abstracted from the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ASICs or the hardware uh, from that point of view. It's really like a cloud-like model, if you want to look at it, which is being provided in the enterprise as well as in the cloud providers. It provides the automation. It has a RESTful API, which is available. It provides the troubleshooting and security capabilities. and 
provides the uh, flow-based data so that it can be used for analytics, IT ops, and integrate with third-party uh, solutions. The important aspect of this particular solution is what we are providing a total software stack, which is providing stateful firewall. There was a question in the previous uh, conversation about stateful. Yes, you can have these states being stored and, and, and you can really provide very scalable solution because it's all scale out model as you grow, as you, as you scale. It can provide uh, encryption services, it can provide micro segmentation, it can provide load balancing, it can provide storage services and I'll cover that in one of the use cases which is we are delivering. Now the heart of this particular thing, if you look at it, is this device which is we had developed is our uh, SOC, a system on a chip, which is really programmable and it's really used for this particular, providing all these services, which I mentioned here, uh, the full stack of this software is available on this particular card, which is what we call it distributed services card, which can be plugged into every uh, server. Uh, and you can also have all kind of telemetry information is available because every packet is being processed and uh, every message is, which is coming from the CPU, we can look at it, what's going on. So this is really a perfect architecture for the edge. Now, the, this full uh, programmable SOC architectures needs to provide whatever the processing uh, capability required for these packets or messages coming from the host. And in a lot of cases, we are finding it out that those are not standard protocols. If you take the use case of 5G, you know, those UPF uh, things which need to be terminated, you know, that's another use case which can be implemented because it's very programmable parts, the programmable device which is available and a lot of evolving requirements. People are continuously deploying certain features as well. I think like uh, uh, I, I talked about uh, from uh, cloud perspective, every cloud is different. You know, they defined, uh, it's a very heterogeneous environment. And uh, we need to make sure that whatever their requirements are, whatever the protocols they're using it, you can adapt to that particular thing. And this device gives you that capability to make sure that you can, uh, you can meet those expectations. Also, P4 native pipelines is really driving very high performance of packet processing. You're talking about uh, you know, 80 million packets per second for uh, you know, 100 gig or 200 gig devices, which is really very, very powerful. And it's not possible to do it on an ARM processors, which is some of the people are trying to do. Apply the principles of P4 programming at the host interface. This is very, very important. Make sure you can provide uh, you know, message-based services. Uh, you can provide uh, you know, the PCI services, whatever it is you want to provide the isolation between the host uh, software which is running and the infrastructure which is you're providing. And it's, it's basically table match action, uh, which is what uh, really being used uh, to make sure that we can do this kind of process for processing. And by the way, in some cases, we are also doing some acceleration of the control plane. The requirement is such, that you can use, also use it for control plane and sometimes also in management plane uh, to make sure that P4 pipeline can be used. Despite of our long history of designing fixed function chips, I think this is really remarkable what we are able to do it in, uh, in last four years, we had developed two chips. One is already in production and second one is just going in production uh, next month. So why P4? I think uh, uh, like we discussed in the first two talks, a lot of uh, innovations is coming into the, uh, from this particular group because of all of you and the ecosystems, uh, you know, we believe that P4 is a very, very powerful uh, language uh, with the extensions and capabilities. There are a lot of uh, processing can be done uh, both at the, uh, in the switch side, in the uh, server side, and some more applications which is going to uh, involve in many different targets. And we have a very growing ecosystems of developer, developers and significant interest by the end users. Now, the approach which we have taken uh, is very, very interesting uh, if you look at it from a point of view of, so initially I think what we provided is a turnkey solution for customers and the customers can integrate through API. So we provide the whole stack. And one of the examples I think we are using it today is in one of the financial customers is a distributed firewall use case. 
So our card is plugged into every servers and then their orchestration uh, tools integrate with our PSM and provide all the policies which is required for these firewall rules, which is required to make sure that uh, it can be deployed in the enterprise environment. And these rules are abstracted rules again. And then we, using the PSM, we distribute to all the uh, servers. And then uh, these firewalls is available very close to where the applications are running. So it has tremendous advantages of making a distributed firewall services as a part of this uh, API, which is available. The third party agents supported on the DSCs, that's another use case where we provide the full stack and the people say, well, I want to run my own uh, uh, controller, which is, uh, which is the case in a lot of uh, cloud providers. They can have the agent running on the DSCs and then it, it integrates with the stack underneath and we provide again the total services and I'll, I'll give you the next example. Customer can fully own uh, the uh, modify reuse code, Pensando develop solutions, stuff like that. And we are working on it, making it sure that some of those codes are available so people can, uh, can use it. Or third party development supported also on the DSCs. If, if some third party wants to develop, we can provide the SDK, we can provide the uh, APIs so that they can develop their code. We are, we are making progress on that particular part uh, as, 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 we, as, as we make progress and as this journey continues. And also the, the customers and third party feature plugged in into Pensando Develop Solution. That's also very important. Like we are talking about this open ecosystems. So when we have solutions and capabilities available, available from the third party, you should be able to bring it in and leverage it. So it's very important for all of us to develop these libraries and develop this code I think with this new website, which was talked about in the very beginning for P4, I think we need to make sure that everybody contributes whatever is necessary so that the other people can take full advantage of it. Now, what is needed, uh, which is at the P4 uh, languages at the edge, is very important that uh, we work with the standards uh, and try to make that uh, possibilities. So we are working with the portable network uh, NIC architecture team to make sure that some of the very specific examples is writable table entries. We wanted to make sure that table accessible by multiple stages, because you know, when you're doing this message processing and stuff like that, you may like to have that information available uh, at different levels of the pipelines, not at the, uh, the parsing level or not at the match, match action levels. The other thing is that like we talked about, uh, this is very, very important. Uh, we are doing also Besides doing the packet processing, which you're doing from the network interfaces coming in as the packets comes in, packet goes out. But this could be packets related to uh, you know, storage, packet related to the network services, packet related to, related to the firewall and, and other capabilities. But from the host side, it's very important to also do this messaging processing. And we are discussing this with the, again, the PNA working group and making it so that we can make this into a, a standard uh, activities. Uh, support for large tables, that's very, very important, particularly, uh, you know, and we are storing that in the, uh, in the one chip is storing in the HPM, in the second chip we are also storing in the DDDR, and we support up to 32 gigabytes of DDDR memory on, on this particular chip. The other important thing which can be done at the edge is that you can run to the completion, and which may not be the case in the switches, we are aggregating multiple uh, different devices, so this is very, very important uh, that uh, we make sure that run to the completion is a very simple way to design it. And we want to make sure that nothing we are doing it here is Pensando proprietary. Actually the whole uh, development work, which is we are doing is using the P4 standard and the extensions. And we want to make sure that all the extensions which we have worked on it, we would like to make it sure that it is become available to the open uh, standards. And we want to work with the organizations to make sure it's possible. The another interesting part is, uh, which is happening uh, is, is the host uh, interactions. So I think there was a little bit uh, discussion happen on the DPDK, but also the word IO is another, another way to standardize the driver, just like the NVMe uh, driver is available on the host. And this could become uh, both in the virtual case as well as a bare metal use case or container use case. These services can be provided and make sure that we optimize and provide the very high performance because the services are already running in the host environment. And by offloading this particular capability and, and using the P4 programmable devices, you see an order of magnitude difference performance. 
which can be uh, which can come out now on the nvme or fabric this is the nvme storage virtualization use case which is we are working on it right now it will be delivered uh, by the end of this year uh, to one of the customers and this has all the services uh, to provide uh, on the NVMe, and it's a bare metal uh, service. So there is nothing is running on the host. All these storage services are running on the card itself. The only thing which runs on the host is the NVMe driver itself. And then obviously you can do a lot of uh, capabilities of compression, encryption, data at rest, data in motion, all kind of capabilities. Uh, those intensive tasks can be offloaded uh, to this particular devices. And again, we are using P4 and accelerated uh, the, uh, these compression te techniques in the uh, accelerated hardware. And combination of the two, and combination of uh, encryption uh, algorithms, which is being uh, hard-coded, and leveraging the P4 and chaining it. You can do any uh, chaining of whether we want to do compression first, then encryptions, you want to do load balancing, uh, firewall, compression, encryptions, all those kind of capabilities are possible to do it because of the P4 programmability. So the P4 programmability, flexibility, give it to new novel services can be implemented and evolved. And like I talked about, it can, they can be changed in any particular order. There is no particular sequence is required. And that's really the power of P4 to give you the performance as well as you know, making it sure that it meets the need of the customers. And our experience so far is general purpose is not suitable for these kind of capabilities. So we are really, really very thankful for all this work which started eight years ago, and we start now leveraging uh, that technologies and really making into productions both in the cloud as well as in the uh, enterprise space. And down the road will be also useful in the service product space. Let me give you one use case uh, which is very, very important, uh, and this is a, a, a use case for a cloud providers, which is really implementing using uh, with P4. Uh, the SDN services, which is like virtual private cloud, uh, security groups, routing tables, load balancing, NAT, VPN capabilities, advanced telemetry. We provide per flow state because all the flows are kept and we can collect the data. It is very customizable. You, whatever you want to collect on every flow, uh, we, are, we are supporting close to 16 million flows, very, very large number of flows. And the other very important thing is upgrade and downgrade below 100 milliseconds, which is really very, very important because you need to preserve the states, you need to move from uh, you know, bringing it down uh, and upgrade the software, and we should be able to do that uh, very powerfully. The other thing which is very, very important in this particular use case is magnitude, order of magnitude performance improve, improvement uh, compared to whatever the solutions they had, both in terms of packets per second, uh, like I mentioned, we're talking about, uh, you know, 50 to 80 million packets per second, and connections per second, we are talking about close to 5 million connections per second, which is really unheard of uh, doing in this particular thing. And thanks to you know, the capabilities, we are leveraging for both of these P4 language. And the last but not the least is very, very scalable uh, with, the, with, the, with, with the architectures, which is what we have in our SOC. And you can also make it very flexible, adapt, and CI/CD model is really comes very handy in this particular uh, development environment, particularly for the cloud, because they want you to, you know, say, I want to have this particular feature right now. Uh, you want to give me this capabilities as fast as possible. All this is possible by, uh, without sacrificing the performance, is possible by adapting uh, the architectures which we have selected, and capability to implement innovative algorithms at any time. We have done uh, some experiments uh, taking RDMA and extend the uh, capabilities of so that you are not limited to the distance and you can implement many different protocols to make sure that uh, you can guarantee delivery of the packets and delivery of the services as a part of this. In summary, I would like to say that uh, what we have is really uh, the network, uh, you know, this distributed services card is really designed for providing very, very sophisticated services. And like I said, less traffic, more processing power per packet, per messages. And we are very strategically positioned, close the applications and host. And edge device must be programmable 
and fast. And what we get is through P4, it's an open standard, is very portable and beyond packet processing. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this time, uh, you know, and let's, uh, thank you. Yeah, th thank you for a very interesting talk, Prem. Um, so we've got a bunch of questions coming in, but let me try to distill them down and, and ask a couple general topics here. One, early on you had, you had a roadmap and you talked about a slide, one of your slides, and you were talking about a, a the top down stack and you were there was a, a firewall example could you say a little bit more about the that full that's now a full sdn stack i presume could you say a little bit more about about that and open standard or is it uh something that you've developed within your company the uh, the software stack uh, which is we talked about is uh, you know all standard uh, data path processing so for example is a standard p4 which is being used and in the control plane is all standard uh, C languages. So we defined our APIs with our SDK, okay, which is very specific to our device, but it's uh, totally uh, transparent to the end user. If they don't see that particular part of the implementation. We have a compiler, we have a tools of level, which is people can write their P416s and then uh, execute on this one. So what we have done is our own stack is basically to integrate all that and provided total end-to-end -end solutions, particularly in the enterprise, because they want a solution. They want solution to be deployed. Now, in the case of the STN, I think it's a combination of the two, because like, uh, like the example I was giving you where they, they took our full stack of the STN capabilities, underlay, overlay networks, all that kind of thing, with our abstracted uh, RESTful API, which is a cloud-like uh, object-oriented interface, which is available to them. And they were able to put their agent on our card itself and able to integrate with their uh, controllers in their environment. So I think it's a combination of uh, both capabilities. We have a lot of open source software, which is we are also using it uh, for some of these capabilities. And uh, so our objective is basically wherever there is open source available, we like to use it as much as possible, running on a control plane, management plane, and data plane is obviously is using P4 standard, uh, uh, using our compiler to compile that code. Right. So I, I, let me let me try to say that back and see if I, I understood. There's there's a critical API that I could in, in, implement my own agent so I can speak to my controller. That's correct. Uh, uh, you have, however, a total solution with your own controller and your own northbound applications. And I'm I'm guessing there's another northbound app API for writing control apps, maybe even. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. That's also possible. Um. So. It is, is there at the moment, maybe I forget exactly where it was in the roadmap. Is there at the moment an example of a second SDN controller controlling that has an agent? Yes, we have, uh, we have a customer which is basically uh, have their own agent running on our stack and basically integrating in their controller environment. Is, is there happen to be an open source version of that at, at the moment? Maybe not. It's not the open source version yet, but I'm pretty sure down the road, that's the objective. That is the objective. That's great. That's great. Um, so a, another question that, that was raised, and I'll just slightly generalize it a little bit, was just about getting access to uh, telemetry data, very specifically memory utilization, CPU utilization on, on the NIC, but also other telemetry data that might be collected, uh, packets flowing through. Um, can you... Are you are you locked into a standard there, like uh, in, in Band Network telemetry, or could you just explain how, how telemetry works? So basically, we are collecting all the data because we have access to all the flows which is going on between the devices, from the host to wherever it's talking to. That flow data, we are making it available through the APIs, uh, is available as a data lake if you want to think about it, and that's a standard data lake you can use. Uh, to, to get that particular data from uh, this centralized data lake where we dump all this particular data and you can pull it out. So we have ecosystem partners, which is basically leveraging that particular data and then analyzing it and then giving us the feedback, what, what policies need to be implemented. So that's one use case of this particular device. Now, if somebody wants to collect uh, the data themselves, we can take from every server where the card is plugged in, uh, we can stream that particular data. Uh, to whichever centralized servers you want to use it for. And we can give in any, any different formats, whatever formats you wanted to have it, we can provide that particular data for the flows. Or you wanted to very specifically 
say, filter it out, out of this particular packet flow, uh, this data, we can also do that and provide the capabilities of whatever your needs are, uh, filter it and give it to you in real time. And that's all done, by the way, in P4. So it's all done in P4. So that that would, I think that would suggest you could you could take advantage of INT if that's what you chose to do. Yes, we worked with them actually, uh, and uh, and we are working now to make sure that uh, we participate with the INT people, and then make sure that we can also uh, use that as a uh, format for supporting it. Yeah, many many fronts on which to participate in ecosystems. Uh, yes. Makes it a very interesting. Very interesting, space. and also it becomes uh, much more useful to the end users because you know, being a startup, a small company, we can only do certain things. By having the large ecosystem supporting us is really a great thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I you, you are participating in the PNA group. I yes, heard. Mario so that, is participating. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would be would, would seem to be a, a pretty interesting and from your point of view important interaction. Uh, can you can you comment a little bit on uh, what you see needs to happen in that group? What what that architecture looks like? Uh, what the PNA looks like? Yeah. So I think uh, uh, we are contributing. We are uh, looking at it where we are right now in this new architecture paper, which has just got published today. Uh, I didn't get a chance to review that yet, but we will review it. Uh, Mario is very actively involved in this particular part of the discussion. And uh, we wanted to make sure that all the capabilities which I talked about today for the edge devices or uh, for providing these services like storage services, uh, network services, security services, they're all being uh, you know, uh, you know, defined as a part of the PNA architecture. Uh, because some of these things is coming from the host because like like talked about some of these storage services is running on the host how can i take that and make sure that uh, in a in a step by step process because not it's a journey it's going to take some time to 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 take something which is people are running for 5 years or 6 years on the host machines and i want to take all those storage uh, services and bring it down uh, to provide the nvme or virtualization uh, as a use case uh, for example so those are the other areas, which is we can look at it, what is required to make sure they all become a uh, standard as a part of the uh, you know, portable net, uh, NIC architecture. Yeah, I, I think that's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. There's, I mean, historically there's always been, we're, we've been in this cycle that we're now looping back around again, you move it to the host because that's the, you know, uh, that's where you get the best bang for your buck in, in cycles. And now you move it back to the neck, then you move it to the host, you move it to the neck, and we're moving it back. We're moving it back to the neck. And Larry, I call this as a wheel of reincarnation. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so in the in the process of of moving back to the neck, which is clearly there's a lot of energy behind it, and P4 seems to be a, a, an interesting front runner for for doing that. Um, the, the extensions you will need to add, I'm, I'm going to make a statement and then just have you react to it. The, the, the extensions you're going to need are going to be increasingly, let me just call them general purpose. Um, uh, you know, first it's going to be encryption, decryption. We heard Guido talk about that. And the next thing you know, someone's going to want to move TCP there as well. And, and, uh, and suddenly it might as well have been an ARM processor as opposed to a pipeline of some kind or, and, uh, and then maybe P4 didn't give you any particular advantage. Do you have any thoughts on that, uh, those trade-offs? I think what we have found out so far uh, in our experience with uh, all the uh, you know, people we have worked with, both in the cloud, in the enterprise, and some in the service provider space, is that uh, they would like to make sure that uh, the data plane aspects of it all runs in P4. Okay. okay. Because the kind of performance, uh, kind of capabilities, uh, things. In some cases, we had to do even the, some control plane has to be done in the P4 also. But the reason for that is because connections per second. Say, for example, you know, if you if you leave it to the classic processes, you know, unless some innovation has to come into the processor architecture, so that you can do those kind of things much faster. I will see it is that a lot of those capabilities. I think we need to work together uh, to make sure that it's being defined in P4. Now, you do need a ARM processors for control plane, management plane, and uh, configuration, whatever is necessary. So the combination of the two, I think the system on a chip 
is the right architecture uh, to, 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 to evolve this. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are also working on our third generation uh, ASICs, uh, you know, and start looking into it. What are the things which you learned from the first two generations and uh, what are the improvements which you need to make to make sure that we can continuously make this journey very, very successful for, uh, for the industry? So that's good. That's good. I think that keeping keeping your eye on the on the data plane optimization is is is, is the right one. Uh, that, that which reminds me of something that you said at at one point in your talk, which was something about unlike a switch, the NIC was going to run to completion. Uh, I interpreted that as I didn't have to stick to a cycle budget because the next was packet was going to show up in so many nanoseconds. Is that what you meant by that? And could you comment? No, I think uh, this is the whole software stack, which is what we are running. You need to make sure that the software which you're running on the P4, uh, I don't want to get the interruptions in between. I want you to make sure that particular cycle is completed. Okay, got it. Um, so you, you you are still, clearly you have to be running under, under the same sort of cycle budgets, if you will, pipeline oh, yeah, budget. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The question is, it's much faster because what, what it takes, uh, say one microseconds or something yeah. to do it in the ARM processors, I can do it in like, uh, you know, less than 50 nanoseconds. Yeah, good, good. That, that, was, my, that was my misunderstanding. Uh, one, one last question from the, from the audience, which was about power consumption. Um, uh, do you, is it something you're conscious of and put thought into or, or not? You have to be very conscious for power uh, because, you know, you plug into a standard server there is a PCI standard which is being defined and it's constrained the powers depending upon what kind of interface you're using it. So you have to be very, very, very uh, cautious of power utilizations, cooling aspects of it. You also have to be very careful uh, making it sure that uh, you provide the right performance for, you know, whether it's 25 gig, whether it's a 100 gig, whether it's 200 gig or going down the road is 400 gig. I think all those capabilities will have uh, different uh, uh, capabilities required in the architecture to support those models and making it sure that uh, you can plug into any general purpose servers. I mean, that's the objective because then the market opportunity is much, much, much bigger. Great, great, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there and uh, appreciate your talk and your answers to all the questions. And there's more questions if you wanna go online and then answer a few of those, uh, quite a few. Oh, thank of you, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate uh, getting this opportunity to talk to all of you. And uh, we will, if I, I don't have a chance to go through the questions, but if you can send it to us, we'll respond to those questions. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, bye-bye.